Building a robot takes multiple steps. Today I will show you what are my steps to create a robot for my learnings, for my courses, in respect to software side, physical hardware side and electronic side. Let's start with planning and software tool chain setup. The first setup we will do is with the platform IO. We will not be using Arduino IDE because platform IO provides us a lot of good features. If you don't have platform IO, you can go into extension search for platform IO and you can click upon it and install it so i already have it we need platform io and github being signed in into your vs code so in platform io we will go into clone git project as we will clone a repository and then we will start developing upon it because of the version control feature we need so this is the repository i am creating esp32 bot let's add a readme file and create a repository this repository has been created. I will get this link, git clone project, paste the URL, press enter. It is going to ask me with the location I want to save. Go into documents, platform IO projects and save this repository on this specific location. We want it to be added into workspace. Now you can see it is initializing the platform IO core for the project that I have. And I will pick a folder in which I will be developing. Now repository is cloned let's create a project from platform io or pio home open new project i will call it esp32 bot board is going to be do it esp32 dev kit framework is arduino other option is esp idf which is quite complex and we will not be going with that let's stay with arduino i will not use default location i will go into projects select the repository that i have cloned and finish on your system if you are doing it for the first time it is going to take a lot of time because it downloads the required esp32 drivers once this has been done we'll go into platform io again and we will pick a folder and this time we are going to select the folder that we will be working on make sure that this platform io.ini file is there press open i will not save because this is the only package that i have it is going to restart your vs code and initialize the required plugins for the project here you can see now this bar has appeared which is a build process upload process and all that stuff one thing you have to keep in mind that if it is not turned green you have to go into source control select the folder of yours and it is going to keep the track of changes that you made so source main.cpp this is your main code let's write some code serial.begin 115200 which is going to display serial monitor so once that is done let's press this build button it is going to compile all of the libraries until then let me connect esp32 to my laptop esp32 is now connected and i am going to press upload and that's how simple it is it is now uploading to my esp32 and led is blinking with the delay it auto detects the port and performs everything automatically if we talk about the serial monitor it might not be working for the serial print to be working we need to make some changes in the platform io.ini here we have to define the speed and sometimes we might need to define the port as well in our case it is dev usb 0 so now let's upload the code and here you can see hello world is being printed after the delay that we have provided so our platform io is now set the last thing that we will do regarding the github version control is start creating issues for our project the first issue is going to be platform io setup press ctrl s and press the stick it is going to create an issue i will create another issue and i will call it 3d robot printing and building and it says you need to save it if we go into created issues you can see i have two issues what is the purpose of issues issues are utilized to track your development and they are really useful for the development process as one can say that okay the next task is this once that task is done you can say that this issue has been resolved so i will keep on adding multiple issues but for now i will say that this issue has been done and how i'm going to do that you can see a simple tick by double pressing it let's go into the source control it says fixes one the hash one represents the issue the first issue and i would say platform io is all set with repository commit it and publish the branch 
let's go into our browser let's refresh it and here you can see Nosh look to issue one branch has been separately created which contains the ESP32 bot and all the required libraries. You can do a lot of things. You don't need to create another branch but the process is you solve your issues in different branches and then you merge it. And we can do that with create pull request which is going to bring this issue one branch into main branch and we would say create and we can just create merge and we say that bring that issue branch to main branch. Let me show you if we go into the main branch now, we can see that ESP32 bot has now appeared in the main branch and we have merged from the issue. That's how the development process works. Modeling is the first step before 3D printing in which you design the body to hold all of the objects and bring the idea into reality by creating sketch into a real 3D printable body that holds all of the components. Once the 3D model for the body is ready, you bring it to the 3D printer. It, it brings the 3D model into real world by 3D printing it. And then we start joining all of these components one by one on their specific locations as we did in the 3D model. You can also model these electronic wires as well, but that would take a lot of time and you can just predict their placement based on your experience with these connections. But all of these electronic wires are get covered by the cover we designed in the 3D model and the robot becomes rep quite representable. In my experience, if your robot and its components are not in place and you start testing your code, things can get wrong even at the stage of burning the microcontrollers. So this is why we just connected everything and now let's start writing the code and testing the components and the motors for their motion. I have added the meshes into our package. We can now push it on the basis of on the basis of this issue that we created so i will click upon it and if i go into source control i can perform commit and publish now this is going to publish on issue number two and it will create a new branch for it now let's take a look into the code that we have arduino .h libraries utilized motor pins are defined channels are defined functions are defined setuping the motors then for serial controlling we are defining a serial read function that is going to take input and the input is going to be of type R100 which is going to say right motor 100 PWM and L left motor 100 PWM that's how it is going to work let's first build it and let's upload this code and see the output code has been uploaded let's open up serial monitor in serial monitor i am saying l0 r0 and now let me give some value l r100 r200 and you can see the wheel start moving then again 0 pwm l2 and l200 you can see the left motor is working so serially our motors are now controlled and our test purposes are working it is not working in the negative values Let's try to give left 400 and it works. The same code is going to be utilized, just new addition for the ultrasonic sensor are going to be done. Trigger pin 18, echo pin 5. These are the two pins and 5 volts at ground to be supplied to the ultrasonic sensor. So we set up the ultrasonic sensor and then read the values. In reading the ultrasonic sensor, we measure the time as we have to send a signal then receive it back. There's mathematics going on. Once we get the distance by reading the ultrasonic sensor, we print it out. If we search this function, we can see we set low, delay this much, high meaning sending, meaning that blocking, then sending, then blocking and then measuring the time between the signal to come back. And then we multiply the speed of the signals multiplied by the speed of sound then divided by two to count one side distance and that's how you calculate the distance to an object using ultrasonic sensor let's see practically how does it looks like so this is the ultrasonic sensor and it is giving us different values based on the distance it is detecting and it is decreasing as i'm bringing my hand closer to it let me bring it back 
and you can see the distance is now increasing so ultrasonic is perfectly integrated into a robot sometimes it gives quite big values as well if we take a look into the code there are some additions we have done for the bluetooth to drive the car this is to enable the bluetooth register or configuration in esp32 then we initialize an object of bluetooth serial then we begin it as we do with the serial then we wait for something to come up on the bluetooth bluetooth serial communication then we utilize that input and drive our robot forward reverse left right backward and stop that's how it is working it's quite simple and it's easy to read let's build it and it is successfully built i will push it into the branch these solves are issue number five and six so i will directly go with issue number six and create a new branch for this issue and fix robot bluetooth driving once it is pushed all of the code is now available i'll create the pull command to bring it to the main and it is given an error that main and issue number six are both same because i already have done it if we can see here all of the code is now available with the branches as issues that are now merged into the main branch step by step so you can track them when you were developing you can add a readme information as well but that's the basic flow that helps you keep track of what development have you done and what changes did you make turn on the bluetooth on your mobile device and as the esp is running it will appear in your bluetooth pair with it let's let me show you the app i'm using arduino bluetooth now this is an important step select all of the buttons that you have set in the code i have selected r l b f in small let's con let's now connect it with esp32 and go into the arrow keys and drive it you can see it is controlling although the direction is not very well aligned i will fix that but it is controlled using this arrow keys of my bluetooth app With the help of terminal, I'm going to stop it as there was no fifth button. I will just send S directly through the terminal. So to hide all of the wires, let's bring in this cover and screw it up. Now the robot is quite representable. Let's restart it, connect it again from your Bluetooth app and let's try to drive it although it is going to be a little hard for me because of looking at the camera and also driving one wheel is not even moving because of the friction but still things are working out finally we are at the stage that we can now add features into our robot why this whole process for only one reason so you can expand upon the base build that you have done and you can also collaborate with people and they can easily understand your project the planning phase is important for the starting but at the end of the day when you are working or collaborating you need a structured development process and that's what i just showed you you can now understand that if you want to utilize any component or upgrade any component it would be quite easy for you because you have developed in a structured way although you can make some changes in the 3d design electronics and the programming to improve it but the base is ready and it is documented so improving its efficiency will not bring back to you the basic development and it can be done easily.